Hello there, this is the second in a series of videos showing you how you can get Oblivion working on your Mac uh, with mods. Uh, in the previous video we installed Oblivion and we also installed the Shivering Arts expansion pack and Knights of the Nine. In this uh, video we will be looking at uh, installing mods. Uh, we'll install a really simple one which gives you an alternate start and then we're going to download and install a lot of modding software to enable us to install some of the more complex mods that really change Oblivion and give you a, a whole different experience. So, I'm going to get myself organised and when I come back shortly, we'll begin. Okay, now, if you remember back to the previous video, um, I mentioned that I was uh, running a mod that gave you an alternate start, so that rather than having to um, fight your way out of the prison, at the beginning of the game, you just arrived on ship. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to install that because it's a nice easy one. This is where you uh, get it from. There will be links to everything um, uh, I show it here in the video description so you can get it really easily. You just go through, you click on the downloads button as I've already done there and it's alternate start version 166 you want. Now I've already downloaded it so let's have a look. What you get is a zip file, so we'll just unzip that. There we go. Uh, yeah, you can have a look at the README if you want. Um, I know what it says, so I'm not going to. Uh, but there we go. We've just got one file, uh, and it, uh, as it's got an ESP um, extension, that means it's uh, really easy to install. Uh, we can just copy it in manually. So, if you remember yesterday. That's the uh, uh, wrapper we're creating the program. So we go in, we show, show package contents, and uh, we go off to drive C. We're trying, we're dr drilling down to the uh, Oblivion directory. In case that was too quick for you, program files, Bethesda Softworks, Oblivion. We want the data directory, and what you do is you copy the alternate start .esp into your data directory. Now you can see I've already done this because it was running in the previous video. Uh, and that's all really all you need to do bar one thing. If we come back out of here, uh, I showed you in the last video how to create the Oblivion Launcher shortcut there. We need to start that again. And it will pop up shortly. There we go. Go to data files and uh, just make sure that uh, the alternate starts uh, there and in, in it's selected. You can double click it to, uh, to get it in. There we go. And services XE again, just crashing all the time, you can just ignore that. Uh, and that's all you that's all you need to do. So uh, we'll just might as well just give it a go very very quickly just to show you how easy it is. Um, not all of, the, all of the mods are this simple, in fact the vast majority seem to be very complicated and that's why you require programs to, to do it all for you. So, let's do new. Yep, start a new game, just so you can see it works. and will actually appear in the cabin cabin of the ship. Yeah, we still get the video at the more. beginning. We don't want to hear Patrick. There we go. That is the cabin. Um, I'll just show you and then I'm going to quit. There we go. I think I did this yesterday, but I will just show you again. Just so you can see. There we go. Ship cabin. We're not in a prison cell. There we go. The Emperor's not coming along to get killed. Right, so that wasn't too difficult. Uh, now we're going to get onto the stuff that's a, just a, a tad more complicated, but first we'll, we'll look into installing the software we're going to need, and that's what I'm going to cover uh, in the next little bit of this video. 
Okay, so uh, we're back now and we're ready to begin uh, with the Oblivion Mod Manager. Um, this is quite a big bit of software. It does a lot of things. It uh, allows you to uh, download mods, package them up and uh, activate and deactivate them. Uh, it's quite useful. Um, it is a Windows program, so uh, as always, it's a good idea to check it over to uh, at Wine HQ, make sure how well it works. These are old test results says there but it does uh, a lot works and what doesn't work might well have been fixed uh, having used it quite a lot I can say that uh, I've not run into any problems with it uh, and it does everything that I need it to although I'm probably not using uh, half of the advanced features it's got anyway uh, we need to um, install a few things in our wrapper first before we can uh, run Mod Manager, I found this out by googling. Um, this is uh, this bloke's got a web page, Wolflaw, and he's done a tutorial on installing Oblivion in Linux. Um, it's still applicable to Mac, so don't worry about that. All he's saying is that apart from DirectX 9, which we installed uh, yesterday before uh, in the previous video, it is yesterday for me. Uh, we've installed that already before we installed Oblivion. We now need to install all these things CoreFonts, .NET, uh, GDI, and VC Run 2005 and 2008. He says you also need to set these options uh, in Wine Tricks. I'll show you how to do it. I've never, I, I don't do it, and I've never. Um, had need to. Uh, maybe uh, later versions of Wine you don't need to, but I will show you how to set them anyway, just in case uh, you want to try it. Right, so what we need to do now is go back into our Oblivion How To package, open it up, and start Wine Skin. Uh, go to Advanced, um, Tools, and Wine Tricks. Right, so I'm just going to pop that to the front and then uh, have uh, wine tricks in front of it just so I can see what I'm doing. Core fonts first, uh, we need to install. So, well, we've got a fonts thing in my bobby there. So, what do you know? Core fonts is underneath it. So, we'll install core fonts just by clicking it and doing run. Um, yep, okay. You can actually just do them all, to, all together, but I'm going to do them individually because uh, .NET 2.0 can be troublesome. It might work, it might not. If not, we'll have to get around it. And uh, if we do have to get around it, I'll show you how to do that. So, uh, it's obviously having to think at the moment. There we go, it's downloading core fonts now. Uh, it's downloaded, no, it's still downloading. And now it's uh, installing them. There we go. Good old services crashing again. So there we go. Wine Tricks has finished doing that. We've now got Core Fonts installed. So uh, onto .NET 2.0 then. So that's under DLLs. Uh, and there it is. So we'll run that one. Yeah, I don't want to run it. And off it goes, and it'll start downloading. And it'll probably take a little while to download it. Uh, 22.4 meg. Oh no, it's going quite quickly. So there we go, the installer starts. And we just run through it. Ah, this is what I was uh, worried about happening. Sony can't find Internet Explorer 5.1 and it needs it, uh, 5.01 and it needs it to install. Um, well, this all relates to Gecko. Now, uh, right at the beginning of um, 
the first video um, wineskin automatically installed gecko now I said at the time it doesn't always work uh, if it does work you will not get that message about Internet Explorer 5.01 so what you need to do to get around this is just keep trying it we're going to uninstaller first this will pop up the uh, normal windows and installer and we uninstall gecko and just remove yeah in services crashes don't worry about that so we've done that it's uninstalled now what you then do is refresh the wrapper there we go and it's offered to install gecko again so we'll just let it do it but where are my window decorations gone okay I'm gonna force quit that because I think something's obviously gone wrong somewhere and we'll try again when it catches up okay I'm gonna quit that as well it's taking too long for my liking uh, where are we? and um, yeah, my Apple menu is unresponsive as well brilliant this is going well if only I could remember the keyboard shortcuts for, uh, for force quit would be well away terminal old friend terminal kill all wine oh there we go it's done it finally and the handy little trick there in case you ever need to I don't know what happened there just a uh, bit of a crash but I shall leave that in the video because it does show that, that it can happen uh, where are we let's try again uh, ba, 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 advanced. What I will do, <coughs> just to make sure everything from that last run's been killed off, I'm going to just select kill wineskin processes there. Obviously, I'm not the only person who gets the occasional problem like that, and that's why they put that button there. So there, we'll just kill all the um, any pre any other processes that are still running, and that's done. So um, I forgot what we were doing now. All oh, oh, right, okay. We were on, what was it, tools, yeah, uninstaller, we'd done that, hadn't we? Just have a quick look at that. Yeah, it's, Gecko's not there anymore. Yeah, and as soon as you do anything, it'll actually uh, in, offer to install it again, so let it download and install. Now that didn't work. It, <laughs> it It's so finicky, this Gecko thing. Right. Uninstall it. Uh, the progress bar should get right to the end. So there we go. It's not even. Yeah, it, it bombed out halfway through. It's not even in there. Okay, we'll install it.
Right, installing. Okay, that this won't update to show it's been installed. Don't worry about that until if we go back in, it would show it. Eventually, that was a bit premature with my clicking there. There we go. It's back in and it appeared to, to run sometimes even though it does appear to run uh, it doesn't install properly so um, the only time you'll ever need it really is for is for installing .NET 2.0 so if you can get away without doing that you won't ever have this uh, uh, fuss so where were we before wine tricks okay .NET so it's already downloaded it so it's not going to do that again it'll run straight into the installer there we go it hasn't done it again I'm going to carry on doing this off camera until uh, it, it uh, does up update Gecko properly um, uh, and I will tell you exactly how long it takes because it's something you obviously may come across as well right it's about uh, 10 minutes or so later on my third attempt uh, to uh, at installing Gecko it's, it's actually worked so I will show you wine tricks actually installing .NET finally um, just be aware that uh, that gecko thing is really quite um, particular about one, uh, installing itself. Um, so it's actually a good thing this this has happened because uh, I doubt that uh, I'll be the only one who's ever going to see this this particular problem. There we go. Straight on to I accept the terms of the license agreement, whichever whatever that is. So no more complaints about Internet Explorer. So we'll just sit here and watch it install and then I'll install the um, uh, rest of the uh, dependencies for Oblivion Mod Manager. <laughs> Okay, that installation pro uh, process for Wine uh, for .NET rather uh, went on for quite a long time, and in the end, I just killed it because it didn't seem to be getting anywhere. Um, it hasn't affected it though. Um, it, uh, .NET has been installed. It, the installer just hung right at the end for some reason. So um, off screen because it was going to take some time. I also installed GDI plus and VC run. Uh, 2005 and 2008 they just download again and run through installers uh, and there's no problem with, problems with dependencies or anything like that uh, and I will actually show you on the uninstaller you'll be able to see that they're installed so they see .NET 2.0 is in and also uh, Visual C 2005 and 2008 so we're getting there now um, it's all been a bit a uh, bit fraught <laughs> things not working the things work fine off camera but as soon as you start recording uh, it all goes belly up anyway now what we'll do is uh, we're ready to download um, Oblivion Mod Manager from here um, you do need to be registered uh, I am um, so then you just click downloads links will be in the description as well so um, don't worry about uh, copying down what it says there um, you want OBMM 1112 full installer uh, now I've already downloaded it what you get is uh, 
Uh, uh, uh, where are we? The zip file. You get that zip file, which you've already unpacked, and that's the setup program that you get. So we'll now install that by using the install Windows software option. So I'll go to da uh, where I downloaded it to and unpacked it to, which was um, ba -ba -ba. there we go. That's the setup program. So we just choose that. Yeah, we get the install wizard. Uh, I accept the agreement, uh, just GPL. Uh, accept the default install path. Yeah, I don't know what that black thing there is, but it doesn't seem to hurt it. Uh, yep, so yeah, allow it to create a program shortcut. Uh, don't, yep. Yeah. Don't create a desktop icon or quick launch icon. Uh, we need all these things, these three things here ticked, and then we just click next. And there we go, it installs um, itself. And then, do we want to view the help file? I don't particularly want to at the moment, but we will just launch it. There we go. Uh, and that's it in and running. And as you can see there, it's picked up the base oblivion. Uh, package plus everything I've installed so far. So um, what we need to do now is come out of there. We need to create um, a, a custom launcher for it, uh, which is the same as we did in the previous vi video for the Oblivion launcher. We keep the main executable as Oblivion, so we just click OK on that. We go back into Advanced, Custom Exit Creator. Uh, I'm just going to call it OBMM. Uh, and we select the right executable which is in program files uh, it's uh, in the same as folder as oblivion I believe yeah oblivion mod manager.exe we just choose that one and uh, we'll save that and it gives us that message yeah it's been made so we can uh, we'll just quit out of there See, and we're in the Oblivion How To um, package, and we've now got. Oh, pardon me. We've now got a, a launcher. Uh, there we are. We've got a shortcut to launch Oblivion Mod Manager. We'll just check that, and make sure it works. Yeah, there we go. Right, so that's Oblivion Mod Manager installed, and that's services exe dot crashing. Uh, in the next part, uh, I'm just going to go and hit my head against a brick wall for 10 minutes and then I'm going to come back and we'll install a, a, one of the other mod managers called Rybash. Okay then, uh, let's uh, install Rybash. Now, uh, Rybash, it's uh, another program for managing mods. Um, I think it does a lot of the same things that mod manager does, but um, does a lot of some of the things besides. Uh, each of them has different areas of uh, functionality and some mods will uh, you'll find might want to uh, be installed with Oblivion Mod Manager others might want to be installed with Rybash the ones that we're going to look at today uh, will use Oblivion Mod Manager but I'm, I'll just show you how to install Rybash so it's there if you need it okay so this is its website uh, again you do need to be registered in order to download it uh, and how does it work under Wine? Well, here's its page on Wine HQ, and uh, yeah, everything but reports works. It says, uh, yeah, and that's that's old test results as well, so it could be even better now. Uh, again, I've had no problems with it, and I've done um, um, quite. A, I've actually done quite a lot with it, uh, trying to install some some uh, uh, um, of the more um, complete mods with lots and lots of different things in. So, uh, after you download it, what do you end up with? You end up with this XE. What you want, in fact I will actually show you which version we want. You want the Rybash 295-2 uh, installer. That's the one you want to install. That will download an XE. So, there we go. If we, go, if we actually run the um, go back into Oblivion how to 
show package contents will actually run the installer there it is right okay choose off it goes there we go welcome to the setup wizard we'll click next um, okay ignore that right I don't actually use the standalone one I've had more luck with the Python version uh, so I, I recommend uh, well at this time anyway uh, at the time when this video is created that you untick uh, well you can leave that no I, I untick it actually so we should do that here make sure oblivion selected and then make sure you've got the Python version of Rybash selected uh, and just leave the default directory there yeah it'll say you're attempting to install Rybash into the programs files directory it's absolutely fine for us uh, it doesn't make it because uh, we're using wine and we're not actually using Windows right okay it does require some things um, to be installed before it will actually run but it it's just telling us here uh, make sure they're all selected um, unlike with Oblivion Mod Manager um, it's, it, these will all download uh, and install automatically so we just need to click next and as it says the installer may become unresponsive while the requested files are downloading so we just have to wait and uh, for the individual installers to pop up uh, hopefully it won't take too long but I'm just gonna sit here inside oh there we go um, I'm not sure it makes any difference we'll just install for all users and there we go Python is yep um, it will leave, the, leave these as the defaults all the directory selections and yep whatever you want to do we'll just keep on clicking next So there we go, that's that done. So it'll now go on and tr uh, download WX Python, I think. That's next. Yes, there we go. Up comes the wizard, and we again, um, I'm just accepting that. Uh, just default, uh, accept all the default options. Okay, uh, we don't want to view the readme. We do want to compile the Python things and also the batch files we want to create. So we'll just unclick the first option and then just finish. And it'll go off and do that. And then the next thing I'll download the Python con uh, com types. There we go. That was quick. Uh, so we'll just set up. Yeah, accept the defaults. And keep clicking next until it installs. There we go. finish finally it'll be pi win so again select all the defaults Okay, that's finished. So, and now we're on to finally doing Rybash setup. So, we'll install, move down, not the batch start menu shortcuts. Um, so, we'll just install Rybash and just let it do its stuff. Okay, I'm not bothered about show details. We'll just click next. Uh, delete files from old bash versions. I'll just leave it there. Uh, okay, we're not going to run it now. Uh, now, because it uses Python, uh, we need to actually launch Python uh, and give it the name of the Rybash Python script. So, uh, for that, the, we need to do a little bit more work. Yeah, we leave uh, Oblivion X is the main executable. 
um, what we need to do is we need to create uh, a batch file within the wrapper just to run it. Now I've, I'm, I'm not going to explain it but I've already got one done here. This is the one that... oops. I did not want uh, MS-DOS to pop up there. What I wanted to do was uh, text editor to open up. Go away boxer. Yeah, force quit. Uh, oh, ignore. Come on. Uh, open with text edit. Basically, it just starts the. It just calls the um, uh, the Python file, which will launch um, uh, Rybash. But you have to be in the right directory to do it. So it, it's quite a simple batch file. Um, I've got it all here. This text I will put in the. Uh, uh, description so all you need to do is copy it into a uh, text editor and put, pop it in the right place. Uh, where I normally save it um, is, in fact what I will do, where are we, if we go into, into in your app here, if you just go into uh, Drive C, Program Files, Bethesda uh, Softworks, Oblivion, uh, just pop it in your, in your Oblivion file Oblivion directory, and you can just um, once you've got, if you just uh, create a text text file with that in, then you can just copy it, uh, you copy rybash.bat and just paste it in here. There we go. Now what we do is we just create a custom exe with pointing to the, uh, to run this, pointing to there. So I'll just close text editor actually. And uh, come back out of here so I can get to the wine skin. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Advanced Tools Custom Exe Creator. Uh, I'm going to call it Rye Bash. Browse. And in we go. Uh, Bethesda Softworks, Oblivion, and Rybash.bat. Now, because it's a bat, uh, batch file and not a Windows executable, make sure that use start.exe is clicked, otherwise it uh, won't work. So, we'll save that. Yep, so there we go, we've got the custom launcher done now. Let's quit out of there. Uh, let's try it. There we go. You get the um, hello. I've lost my window decorations again. But yep, yeah, is it working? That part of it's there. We go. Yeah, turn lock times off. Um, I turn this off because uh, you load order. Uh, here which is talking about the order in which your mod, mods load is once you've got it right and I'll show you how to do that in a minute you don't want it to be resetting I don't think so I always click no and that's not going to disappear now I don't think oh right okay despite the fact I've got no window borders or anything so there you go they, there's just your list of mods that you've got and you can select or deselect them much much as you can in um, um, the um, Oblivion Mod Manager. But this does some extra stuff as I've said and it's here if you need it. And I will just quit that actually. I just want to go in and make sure it's going to start up with the Windows decorations. Yeah, there we go. Um, it's intermittently, uh, yeah, Windows don't get the type, uh, the menu bars. Yeah, services, goodbye. Uh, As long as you accepted all the default directory paths um, when you installed Rybash, those um, that this batch file will actually work for you as well. Uh, it turned lock times off. Yeah, I've already said this, haven't I? Yeah. Okay. So there we go. That's there if you need it. Right. So one more to do. Uh, one more bit of software to install, and then we. Can get actually get into uh, playing about with some mods. So I shall come back uh, in a minute after I've gone off and made myself a cup of coffee and then uh, we'll do that.
Right, uh, let's crack on then. Uh, where are we? Uh, the next bit of software uh, we're going to install is uh, called BOSS. Um, all this does, uh, it's just a database really. Uh, it knows about loads and loads of mods, thousands of them, and it also knows uh, which order they should be loaded in in order to um, avoid conflicts. So, um, let me just demonstrate. Well, let me just actually um, get the right uh, window open up first. No, it doesn't want to. Uh, we will go there then. And uh, I'm just trying to get to the Oblivion how to. There we go. Share package contents. If we start up something, if we start a Bry Bash. And I know it's taking a little while to load up, but it will run faster uh, yeah, that on uh, your machine because you won't be running capture software at the same time. Right. Okay. There's our mods. Uh, basically, we'll sort uh, if when you've got pages and pages of mods installed, um, uh, you get conflicts between them. They have to be loaded in a particular loaded in a particular order. And what Boss does will, will it will just sort them all out uh, and put them in the right order and so when you go into Rybash or Oblivion Mod Manager, they'll all be there in the right order for you without you having to do anything yourself. So it's extremely useful and any time you add a new mod it's worthwhile running BOSS. So let's just quit this then and we'll install it. So uh, there we go, let's go to Downloads and what you want to get is just the BOSS installer. You want to download that. Now I already have it. There we go. 205161911. Uh, let's install that into the uh, into our the Oblivion wrapper, which is hiding under there. So run that. To install Windows software. desktop and downloads there there so there we go just accept the defaults uh, oh well yeah, I'll click that oblivion because it knows oblivion's there so that's it, it's going to install it for Oblivion. Um, yeah, accept all of that. Oh, apart from we don't need to start menu shortcuts. Uh, so, install. Right, okay, we'll create a launcher for it um, first. I'm not bothered about being the README. Uh, and of course, we don't need to do any of, any of that. There no, should be no old boss versions there. Okay, main XE is kept as oblivion, and we'll go to advanced um, tools, custom XE creator. Uh, we'll call it boss. Browse for the XE. If I can remember where it puts it. Uh, program files, Bethesda, oblivion, boss, boss to XE. Or is it? I don't know. I think it's boss GUI.exe. We'll try that one first. So we'll save that. Uh, click done. Save that. And we'll try running boss. Now I'll have a quick drink of coffee. There we go. Now. Um, it actually has a list of um, 
Oh, go away services. It has a list of uh, mods and the orders they should be in, and it downloads that automatically for you. But you, um, you, you always want to uh, leave update um, master list uh, selected. Um, boss log format. Change that to plain text if you can. There we go. Um, because it will always view the uh, the log after you actually run it, and um, because that option's clicked there. Uh, and it's just quicker to look, to to view it in plain text than it is uh, in HTML. So, uh, with those uh, options done, all you need to do really is just click Run Boss. There, see, it's updating the later, uh, updated the, to the latest master list. Now it's just uh, doing it. There we go. So of course I haven't got a lot of mods and I haven't got anything really installed at the moment. So yeah, it just tells me what I've got. Uh, so it'll turn to start, nice, blah blah blah, all done that and they're all in the correct order if they weren't already. Right, so that's that done then, so now um, well when I come back we'll uh, install a biggie mod. Yeah, should be fun. Right, okay, let's get started. Uh, what we're going to uh, look at now is the unofficial uh, Oblivion patch, which fixes lots and lots of bugs and problems that uh, Bethesda didn't in the latest patch. Now, uh, if we go to the description, um, I will just point out this to you. You don't use it uh, if you're not already patched to that version number. Uh, otherwise it may cause bugs it says or things not to be fixed that were advertised as such now if you remember from the previous video I could I couldn't patch up that high because we um, because we couldn't get um, shivering Isles to install through the installer we had to do it manually um, if that's the same for you then obviously don't don't do this but I am just going to do it now just to show you how you can do it and use it in oblivion mod manager if you've got uh, the Game of the Year edition of, of Oblivion, which comes already patched up to that level, you can actually install and run this. Um, so, anyway, you want to go to Downloads, and you don't want the, the EXE version. Um, it is, where you see something say it's own, it's got an own mod version, that's for the Oblivion Mod Manager. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this 7-zip archive one because Oblivion Mod Manager does understand that and a lot a hell of a lot of mods do come in 7-zip format so by showing you how to do this in 7-zip format you can apply that to the, all those other mods that come in the same format. Still with me? No I'm not either but let's carry on anyway so if we got to downloads I've already downloaded it I believe uh, there we go it's just ooh. Unofficial Oblivion Patch version 3.20 manual version, that's the one we want. So, let's get uh, Chrome out of the way and uh, launch Oblivion Mod Manager. Which is in there. So what we are going to do, we are actually going to create ooh, an Oblivion Mod Manager OMOD uh, file. So what we do is we click the Create button. There we go, we get the OMOD Creator uh, window up. And what we're doing is we're going to add an archive, which is uh, anything in .7-zip format, as you can see it says there. So I'm going to... oops go oh yes this is something I've forgotten it's been a week or two since I've done this uh, for real um, I wonder if I can get into it from my co my computer I can't actually get can I uh, no I don't think it's going to no I haven't got access to my Macintosh file system so what I will do is uh, I'll leave that there for a moment and where are we find uh, We've got that one. I am going to copy. Uh, if I'm going to go, go into Drive C, Oblivion files, this is uh, Oblivion mods. I'm going to make 
a a new folder just uh, downloaded mods call it oh I've got the there we go and we're going to go into it and I'm just going to copy this oops into there there we go and I can now actually get to it so um, where are we downloaded mods there we go and we just open it now it is actually working the way in the background there uh, it's just unresponsive to, to clicks you just have to wait for it uh, sometimes as well when you load a 7-zip it creates uh, information it, it contains information that uh, Oblivion Mod Manager understands and you will actually get pop-up uh, pop boxes saying do you want to uh, import these items or whatever or use this information just click yes if it does that there we go so not uh, a lot of the times as well it will actually fill out the mod name version number and author and email sites um, but we're going to have to enter enter them ourselves. So I'm just going to call it uh, an official patch. Uh, and I think it was 1.32 or something, wasn't it? Or was it 3.3? Can't remember. I'll say 3.3. <laughs> and that's it. Now that's there. So we just click on Create O Mod. Oh yes, and it always say you haven't entered the north and name. Do you, I, do you want to continue? Yes, I do. Yeah and also the de uh, there's no description but I'll continue from that so it then goes about compressing it all and that's actually going quite quickly um, some of the mods you can get are hundreds of megabytes in size and can take a little while but by the look of it this one isn't going to be so bad so we just uh, sit and wait for it to um, to do to finish and it's a uh, opportunity for me to just have another quick drink of coffee there we go, oh it's done the first part now it's doing another little bit yes this second bit is the one that takes the time and it there we go it is going to take a little bit of time so what I will do is I will let that continue off screen and when it gets near the end I'll start recording again yeah, it's nearly finished now it's only been about five minutes but um, it is quite large this uh, this mod There we go, we should get a little pop up in a minute. There we go. O mod created successfully. So, there we go. Uh, we can click on that and activate it. And it'll pop all the files where they need to go. So see if you if you get a mod which has a lot of files, packaging them up like this is actually uh, it's actually a lot easier to install with this just cl one click as opposed to doing it sort of individual file by individual file. There we go, and as you can see, we've got uh, some uh, new things installed and added there. Uh, so what we can do now is, uh, if we just come out of here, right? Okay, this is where I want to be because we want to run boss now. 
just to make sure everything's loaded in the correct order. There we go, so just click run boss. And there we go, nine plugins it's found. Yeah, and just some info about the ones it's found. And uh, if we can now go back into the mod manager, we should see that the order of the um, um, uh, mods has changed. And Boss has sorted them for us. It's starting up. Oh, it is now. Yes, there we go. The three new ones were at the end now, and let's actually move them up to right at the top. So, uh, that was nice and easy. Uh, and also, if you want it decided you didn't want them in there anymore, just click deactivate and just do that. And there they're gone. Uh, no problem. Much easier than uh, other ways of doing it. Now, uh, I'll just point out uh, where was it? Unofficial patch. There we go. It's got an OMOD version. That means that you didn't have to do it by doing 7Z, but uh, where are we? You could have just uh, done that and then done load. There you go. And just loaded in your own mod there. It saves you having to do that extra bit. But as I said, uh, you do, will come across a lot uh, of mods that are in 7Z format, and you will have to go through that um, uh, procedure to get them in there. Something else I want to show you uh, is that there is an unofficial patch for Shivering Isles as well. So uh, if you've got the Shivering Isles and if you are patched up to that version already you can then in download and install the Shivering Isles patch 2. But I'm not going to do that because it would be just the same uh, as showing you things I've already done. Right, so that's that for the unofficial patch. Uh, I'm going to go away and have a quick break and then come back and um, show you another patch which is uh, actually going to change the gameplay considerably. Hello, back after a very quick break, and um, what we've got here is uh, Oscuro's Oblivion Overhaul, which is a extremely large mod, 400 megabytes odd, uh, and it uh, it says it aims to make Oblivion a much more interesting, challenging, realistic, and dangerous place, and also offers great rewards for the daring adventurer, regardless of your level. Yes, so um, new quests, new monsters it's a lot harder. Uh, the leveling system, well, uh, monsters, uh, mobs don't level with you now. So there will be some some things that you just can't deal with at first. You'll have to come back when you've leveled up. You will die lots, believe me, I know. Um, but it is a very good, a very good mod. Uh, thoroughly recommended, which is why I'm going to down uh, show you how to uh, install it. Actually, it's that easy. It comes um, in a 7Z format, uh, one of the many files that do, and we'll do with 133 complete. Um, that patch setup is actually to patch the 132 version to 133, so we just need this one. So, let's get started. Finder. I've already copied it over into downloaded mods inside the wrapper so I can actually access it. There we go, it's 7Z. Uh, so let's come out and start the mod manager. Oh, I'm just going to stop that because window decorations have gone and I... Uh, yeah, there we go. I'm going to force quit, quit that. There we go. It's not something I normally see. It's uh, irritating when it does happen because it means I've got to start again. Right. Okay, we've got the unofficial patch still there. That's fine. So uh, we are going to create uh, an OMOD again from that 7Z. So uh, we do add archive. 
and that's it, Obscura, Obscuro's Oblivion Overhaul 133 and we open it and it will take a bit longer to um, to open because it's um, a lot bigger than uh, that unofficial patch was so we just sit here and wait unfortunately we don't get the busy cursor so we can't see it's actually doing something but it is doing uh, something in the background, it's chugging away Still going, still going, no, I'm still here, I'm still watching. And if you if you ever sat here like this yourself and you're thinking, is it done or is it not, just just try clicking on something because it won't have any effect while it's still uh, working its way through this 7z file. I know what I was going to do. Uh, let's go back out there. I'll just show you how big that one is while it's working. No, I wanted that one. Four hundred and twenty two megabytes. Compressed, so uh when it's uncompressed, um God knows how big it is. There we go. So, yeah, this folder contains ESP files and subdirectories. Um, you normally, you just click yes, you want to continue because they know what they're doing, these people. So, yep, yeah, we'll click yes. OMOD conversion data is available. We would like to import it. If there's a OMOD version data there, or whatever OMOD data there, we want it. So we just click yes. And there you go. These are all the various files it contains, and as you can see, it's got the data there. It's got the uh, mod name, author, version number, uh, everything. So what we need to do then is we, we can have, well, we can have a quick look. Dangerous traps, uh, magic. Uh, there we go. Uh, what we need to do now is just create the O mod. So we click on that now. Uh, as before with the unofficial patch it will go through two lots of compression the first one doesn't take very long the second one takes uh, a while and will take a while for this one because it's 422 megabytes so while that's uh, working away I'm gonna stop recording uh, and just you take a note at the time there 1345 and we'll see what time it is when uh, it's finished Well, oh, don't know why that's just popped up there. Let's get rid of that because I've been messing about while this has been doing it, it's been compressing. There we go. Oh, mod created created successfully after about half an hour. So there we go, and there we go. Now we can click on it. Uh, we even get a fancy little icon there, and we can click activate. And there we go. Now it should find some scripts in there to run and give us a few prompts. If is if this is uh, the mod I'm thinking of, and I'm sure it is. So we'll just let it um, grind away for a second and um, wait and see what happens. Yes, just decompress everything you've just spent the last half an hour compressing. Marvelous. So I will just sit here while this uh, carries on. Um, the sound on the video is still working, I'm just not making any noise.
There we go. So, uh, blah blah blah. It's just a bit of compatibility information. Are the following mods as they are. Blah, blah blah. No. Okay. That's not applicable to us. We haven't got any of these mods already installed, which is just what what its warning is about. We need to do if we uh, need to install them or whatever if we need to do. So, continuing the installation. Yes. So, so we'll go for the full. We'll go for the full option, which it's got clicked. Uh, selected rather default. Do you want to change the default uh, uh, skill level rates? Uh, no, we we will select no and get the full experience. Do you want to remove the drop? No, we'll, you should, we shall select no and have drop lit torches. Are you using a user interface mod which changes spell times to be displayed only in text? No, we are not. So uh, I think we can select no there. Are you using another modification which alters the script, eff script effects spell entry? Uh, no, we're not. So we can click, click no on there. Do you want to change the default for respawn rate? Uh, we'll go with the full experience as intended, so we select no. Do you want to use uh, water weeds? Yeah, underwater weeds. To make it more realistic. Yes. Yes, I'm going to put it in. Yes, uh, changes the map marker behavior cities. Blah, 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 blah. Right, okay. Uh, do you? Um, I'm just going to go for the full uh, experience by selecting no. Uh, you can. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to select. The, I'm not going to read that. But they say if you want the full uh, experience as intended, select no. So I'm selecting no. Um, yeah, this will change the appearance of, flo uh, of flora when you harvest from them. So, well, I guess we'll use that. Uh, ba -ba -ba, harvest flora contains to the shivering isles. We've installed Wizard's Tower, so we'll do that. Uh, in fact, oh, uh, ba -ba. no, I've not installed Vile there, but I have installed Shivering Isles and Wizard's Tower, so we'll have them. Uh, for ma making mushrooms disappear entirely, yes, we'll install that additional data file. Do you want to use Living Economy 3.63? Uh, if you want the full experience as intended, select yes, so we'll select yes. Please choose a Living living Economy modules. Uh, well, all of it, I think, there we go, so I've selected all of them. Remove Barter Chatter, so you don't get there. You bought that for some. Uh, no, I'll keep. I'm going. I'm going to keep the barter chatter. Please make sure that living con economy modules are loaded before obli Oscuro's oblivion overhaul ESP. This is why you use something like Boss. Do you want to install all the readme files into separate folders? Yes. Nice and neat. Uh, the installer. Uh, yes, if you've got existing games which you want to update. Uh, existing saved games that you want to update, there's an XE for that, but we're starting from scratch, so I'm not really bothered. Textures, message, and sounds will now be installed. This might take some time. Okay, off you go. It's all taking a bit of time, to be honest. So we just wait for it now to uh, do all that. Uh, and again, I will sit here and do it. Oh, there we go. It's now installed. That was quick. I wasn't expecting it to be that quick. So it's now installed. Enjoy. Uh, so it's still finalizing the uh, installation and this window here should update when it's done. Is it? Yeah, I've just, I just clicked on that to see if it was responsive. It's not, so it's still working. So we just um, carry on and wait. There we go. Now then. So we have got all of those in there. I'll just leave that. There, and it's blue because it's activated, I believe. Yes, and uh, it's green for un deacti uh, unactivated. It should really be red, I suppose. Be a bit more logical, but never mind. Never mind, I didn't write this. So we're, we're done with that now. Uh, we can click that come out and I need to where am I I am inside my wrapper so what we need to do now is run boss just so it can sort the load load order out for us There we 
go. So run boss. Boss working. So 15 plugins, blah blah blah. Oh yes, services go away. Thank you. So there we go. It sorted them all out to avoid conflicts. Right. So well, what I'm going to do now then is actually start it up. And now one of the things we installed was to change the appearance of plants after we harvest from them. So uh, I'm just going to go into Oblivion now and try harvesting from plants and see, seeing if their appearance change uh, appearance changes and that's how we'll know if the mod's in and working. Apart from everything else it does. Which um, new monsters, new dungeons, some new quests and um, oh dear. Oh there we go. Uh, and uh, lots more dying to be done. And uh, it does load up a bit more slowly now. The more mods you get in, the, the slower it gets at loading. And um, having screen capture software running at the same time doesn't help. It's not normally this slow, but there we go. Right, okay. So um, I'll load one. Um, let's go. To, have we got? Ah, oh yes, I've got one at Anvil. Let's load that one. I usually want to load this game. Uh, oh, actually, no. I'm going to have to start a new game to get the uh, to get everything in. So let's return that. Uh, new. Start new game. Yeah. I'll end up on the ship, and we'll go to Anvil. because there are harvestable plants at uh, Anvil. Right, and that creaking sound is the uh, sign that the new mods, uh, the alternate start mod is working as well because we're on board a ship. There we go. I was born ages Should we listen to a bit of ago. Patrick? For 65 years no. I've ruled as Tamriel. Let's Emperor. not. Come on. Stop Patrick. Go on. There we go. Enter character name. Uh, Cynthia. Yes, I know it's a bloke. Uh, birth sign, we just do the fill in anything here just to get us out the door as quick as we can. Yes, I do want to be a thief. Uh, and to go with that, my specialization is going to be Crusader, which is a logical com uh, combination, not uh, social status. I should be a skilled craftsman of a, a blacksmith, uh, comfortably off. And we're going to arrive at Anvil. I am not going to be a vampire. No, I will not not click that or that. Hmm. There we go, so having done that, have a quick sleep. There we go. So, just get rid of these quest pop-ups. Come on. I'm clicking. There we go. Hello. Right. There we go. Frost Craig Spire. Haha, <laughs> right. Yes, continue. All this just to our harvest a couple of plants. You're off duty now. Safe travels. Bye. Right, okay. Where are we? 
Uh, I was looking for some aloe vera. Uh, anyway, let's. Um, when you start from this alternate start, make sure you get all your gear out of your traveller's sack, won't you? Ah, aloe vera. Let's just run over there. And. Uh, and. Uh, come on, that's it. There we go, this appearance has changed. The mods are working. And he's got some fancy armour on. Does he normally have that? Is that, is that the mod as well? I don't know. Quick peek in Anvil and that will... Uh, Let's see. That will do. run over to the main gate because I think with that mod you, you get notices um, uh, posted at the main gates of, uh, of towns and cities sh um, giving you the latest news and places where to go and things like that it's you hi it might not be this mod it might be another one because it's oh there we go yeah there we go that's that's because of the, uh, the mod as well. Warning to Anvil citizens and visitors. Yeah, blah blah blah. Keep away from here, which is basically. Um, yeah. There we go. So, mods are in. Oh, and that's got me a quest. Shadows in struggle for power. Oh. Right, anyway, so there you go. One of the, one of the new quests in the mod. So, let me quit out of here. That's really uh, it then. That's, it's not that difficult uh, to do these mods, is it? And in fact, I will show you what you can what you can actually do. If I go into my main Oblivion, uh, show package contents, and if I load up uh, the Oblivion mod manager from here, I will just show you what I've got installed and what I play with. Slow with capture center. Don't did I do anything? Oh, there we go. Something's happening. Services XE has crashed, so uh, it's obviously working. Which just shows that it, it does happen. Or it's not just something that I did in that um, other one. There we go. Marvelous. Look, I've got all the. These are the. These are all O mods. Here, I'm not going to go into each one and what they do, but I'm just doing this to show you you can get a lot in there and a lot working look at all these there we go some I've not got selected uh, custom cost problems but there we go all of that in there so uh, that's it then this that should give you uh, get you started in modding oblivion uh, and as you can see you can do quite a lot with it so yeah just um, enjoy it and also as well I hope you've seen uh, from this how easy it is to uh, install um, Windows games and, and, and on your Mac uh, as long as you check it on the YNHQ website first to make sure that it does actually run uh, you know reasonably well um, it is actually dead easy to get, get them uh, running um, and I really can't think of anything more to say now. I've shown you everything I wanted to. Uh, so I hope this has been useful for you. Uh, I just thought I'd pass on what I learned when I was getting uh, Oblivion up and running as I wanted to. So there you go. Uh, enjoy. <laughs>